It's now my privilege to lead us to the table of Jesus Christ where we remember the body and the blood of Jesus and his forgiveness. My experience in being able to sit and hear um, John preach here from Ephesians 4, 25 to 32 and these six areas of Christian obedience, really a blessing for, for me to hear that. You know, I've... Um, as long as I've been shepherding here a decade and a half, <clears throat> uh, John has been just one of those people in my life where I hope you have somebody in your life where if something goes down and you're not sure what to do, this is the person you call because they're better at everything than you are. And, you know, that's what... Uh, true, the true story is... There have been several times in the last few years when I have had to deal with church members who didn't exactly obey these six areas. <laughs> and then I have to deal with the fallout of it in your life and relationships. And um, John has helped me walk through that. Really thankful for that. It's entirely appropriate for us to come to the table here because... Look at the last three words of John's text. He spoke from Ephesians 4, 25 through 32. The last three words of verse 32, Christ forgave you. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. God in Christ forgave you. The first word of John's text in, in uh, Ephesians 4, verse 25, is therefore. That fits with the first phrase in this whole chapter, which is Ephesians 4, verse 1, where it says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy. And he lays out all of these areas of obedience. We cord them down to these six areas of putting off and putting on in 25 to 32. But this chapter where it says, therefore, do these six things, and this chapter where it begins in verse 1, therefore, walk this way, there's no better way for this chapter to end than that last phrase in verse 32 where it says, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Ephesians 1, Jesus Christ has come to redeem us with his blood. Ephesians chapter 2, by grace you've been saved through faith in Jesus Christ, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Ephesians chapter 3, the plan of God from all the ages was to redeem us and purchase us by Jesus Christ. That's Ephesians 1, 2, and 3, what God has done for us in Christ. Ephesians 1, 2, and 3, what God has done for us in Christ. Then, Ephesians 4, 5, and 6, what Christ now does in us, in our relationships, and in our obedience. If all you have is these six commands in Ephesians 4, start obeying in these six ways. Good luck with that. Moral imperatives can make us feel that we're not measuring up, but they can't change us within. Not really. That's why Ephesians 4 follows. That's why the imperatives follow the indicatives of what God has done for us, what Christ has done for us. The law, what we need to do. The gospel, what Jesus has done for us. The law and the gospel. The law and the gospel. These are two really huge categories for understanding the Christian life. The law and the gospel. And they were summarized so aptly. Uh, John Bunyan, have you heard this? John Bunyan summarized the law and the gospel dynamic. Run, John, run, the law commands. It gives me neither feet nor hands. Better news the gospel brings, it bids us fly and gives us wings. The law can exhort us and condemn us, but it can't save us. We come to this table, we come to this table because Jesus Christ in the gospel, he saves us, he makes us new from within. And that's what we remember. 
So I'd invite the men to come and pass the bread. And as the men pass the bread, this communion meal is for all of those who are members of Jesus Christ. You don't have to be a member of Racine Bible Church to take this, but you do have to belong to Jesus Christ. If you're not a Christian, if your life's not submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ, then don't take judgment to yourself. Just let it pass. And just watch how those who belong to Jesus worship him. But if you belong to Jesus, well, this table it, it, it is where you recognize it's not in me, it's in Christ. It's not what I've done, it's what he's done. So as you prepare to take the bread, as you prepare to remember Jesus Christ, when you hold that bread, let it represent that you rely not on yourself, but on Christ. It's good to come to this table because it keeps us from becoming exhausted. This bread represents that it's not by the strength of your flesh that you could save yourself or please God. It's Jesus Christ who has done that for you. So this table delivers you from exhaustion and delivers you into a place of exaltation where you just praise Jesus for what he has done. Remember Jesus Christ. Remember what he has done for you. Take some time to thank him for being your savior, to thank him for dying for you. Take some time to remember him. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience. There's one body and one spirit. There's one Lord, one God who's over all and through all and in all. Thank Jesus for calling you. Thank him for saving you. As we prepare to take the bread together, in John's text this morning, there were those six areas of putting off and putting on. Speech, anger, lying, stealing, possessions, forgiving others, all those six areas. If we were optimists, we could say those are six great areas of obedience for us, but really because we know ourselves, we tend a little bit toward pessimism and there are just six ways that we know that we fail. I, I can't say that I look at that area and that, that uh, I don't have sin to repent of in those areas. I do have sin to repent of in those areas in my life. Core it all down to this. Remember this. What this bread represents is that you're able to say this. Where... I fail, Jesus Christ succeeds. You may fail in every one of these six areas. What this represents is that Jesus Christ never failed. He never grieved the Spirit of God. He never failed to speak the truth to show God's anger in a righteous fashion, to forgive. Jesus Christ did all of this perfectly. So if I stood in my own flesh, my own flesh, my own bread, I'd be condemned. But Jesus stood in my place. One in my skin took my place and perfectly fulfilled the law of God for me. That's what this represents that in every place that I failed, Jesus Christ succeeded. When the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles were with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before my sufferings. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom. And he took the bread 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to them and he said to them, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's remember him together. Lord Jesus, this is your body. We remember that where we failed, in our very place, in our very flesh, in our very skin, you succeeded and won the victory for us. We remember this and we rejoice. Lord Jesus, in your name, amen. Ask the men to pass the cup and just give you a moment to continue to meditate on what God has done in forgiving our sins. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted. Let all bitterness and wrath be put away from you and forgive one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Take some time now to say, God, I, I put away bitterness. I put away unforgiveness. And take time to remember how God in Christ has forgiven us. In my sin, yes, even then, his blood avails for me. Praise him for shedding his blood for you. As God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4 is so beautiful about the unity of the body that he called us into the body and that he called us into each other, gave us different gifts so that all together the body could accomplish something that we couldn't accomplish on our own. So thank Jesus for calling you into this body and ask him to love others through you. Say, Jesus, show me how to love, show me how to serve. Show me how to receive the service and the love and the encouragement that others have for me. Lift up your relationships within this body to Jesus. Lord Jesus, we lift up ourselves and our relationships to you. In your name, amen. As we prepare to take the cup together, let me just tell you two things that happened to me last week. So last week I went on online and I clicked on something. You've probably clicked on this too. I clicked on a list of the celebrities that died in 2016. You know, and then it just showed their pictures and, and who they were, the celebrities that died last year. Maybe you've seen a similar list. This isn't all of them, but John Glenn, George Michael, Princess Leia, Carrie Fisher, Arnold Palmer. I have a personal story about Arnold Palmer when my shadow got in the way of him while he was putting when I was at a tournament, but we won't get into that. But I just went through this whole list from 2016 of uh, celebrities who died. And when, when somebody that we've never met, but whose kind of art or music or whatever made our life better, when they die, we, we feel emotional and maybe we'll hashtag RIP, but it's, it's sort of out there. It's not really embodied and real to us. I had another experience last week too. Right, right after I looked through that list of those who died, I don't know why he did this and it surprised me that he did this, but we had a board meeting here. Uh, our Racine Bible Church board met here on Monday night. Now the backstory, we were supposed, the board was supposed to meet on Sunday night, but if you remember, last Sunday night, the Packers were beating the Cowboys in our successful effort to run the table. That was when we were supposed to have our board meeting. So 
As a wise and loving pastor, I moved the board meeting from Sunday night to Monday night. It's okay, all the guys were still able to come and uh, they were much more spirit-filled on Monday night than they would have been on Sunday night. But so we walk into this board meeting on Monday night. I had just looked through this list of celebrities that died and I didn't know he was gonna do this, but for some reason, Steve, chairman of our board, when we sat down on the board meeting, he said, I wanna start this meeting with a word of prayer and then I just wanna read to you the Racine Bible Church members who died in 2016 and he went through that list and it was completely different for me than clicking through that list of celebrities so you've talked about Ann Batikas my friend Alan Schneider who I love to pray with Drew other people and it was like, I thought about right now. Those are people that I, that I took communion with. I'm one, I'm one with them. The blood of Jesus Christ makes me one with them. And I'm actually one with them locally in this expression of the body. Their gifts make me more like Jesus and my gifts make them more like Jesus. And that kind of family belonging is what Ephesians 4 is all about. And, and all six of these virtues that, that John led us through, he said they're all relational. They are, they're so relational because we're one body together. And that's why we come to the table together. We remember Jesus together. And Jesus gives us love for one another. After the bread, Jesus likewise took the cup, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood, the new covenant of forgiveness of sins. Let's remember Jesus together. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you have made us one by your sacrifice, by your blood. You have made us one. And so, Lord Jesus, we remember you and we praise you. And we ask that you would help us to enjoy that unity that belongs to us as members of the same body. As one church, let us glorify your name as we serve you together, Jesus. May the grace of Jesus Christ, may the grace of Jesus Christ be with you as you go. Amen.